The following is a presentation of the Bellip Sports Media Network. The NFL trade deadline is now over, and it, we have met that, and so we've got a lot of NFL trades to get to, and, and we're going to mention all of the top trades that we see in the NFL, as long as going into a two-minute warning where we've got some extra news to get to there. We're also going to talk about the NBA in-season tournament and what all of that entails, and we're also going to release our College Football Week 10 Top 10 for you guys, so that way you guys can see who we have in the Top 10, and whether you like it, whether you don't dislike it, we're going to give it to you anyways and then we're also going to get into some betting and we're going to do all of this and much more today on rising to the occasion Hello, everybody. Welcome back into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We're excited to get back to you guys. Uh, We weren't able to release an episode on Tuesday, so we're very happy that we were able to squeeze out some time today to make sure that we get an episode out to everybody. And before we do, we want to mention our sponsors for today, and that is FanDuel Sportsbook. As many of you know, you can go to rising2.com slash bet, and you can find all kinds of different sportsbooks and what's available to you, and it'll give you the promotions, the best promotions that are available to each each of those sports books, but we're going to stress that you try out FanDuel. FanDuel has been one of my favorite sports books that I've tried recently, and I've been jumping on the FanDuel uh, wagon. It's got all kinds of amazing deals and profit boosts that are constantly going on, but if you go to rising2.com slash FanDuel, you can sign up today and bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. You must be 21 or older to be able to bet on FanDuel, but uh, if you go over there and terms and conditions also apply, and the promo might be different based on your location but you can go to r-i-s-i-n-g-t-o dot com slash fan duel and you can get signed up today bet five dollars and get 150 dollars instantly uh, it's an amazing deal so go check it out like i said fan duel has been one of my my uh, most favorite here recently uh, that i've been using i've been using that one a lot and being able to find all kinds of amazing deals on there with the profit boosts that they offer and everything so go check it out fan duel uh, you can sign up and get a Uh, bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. Uh, And that $150 is a great way for you to to get your your bankroll rolling. Uh, So go get signed up today. You can go over to uh, rising2.com slash FanDuel, R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O dot com slash F-A-N-D-U-E-L, FanDuel. Get it, get it today, and go try it out. I'm going to bring in my co-host for this evening. I've got Jeremy all the way over in Sioux City because I am not near you today. Uh, how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. Then we got a good lineup, Bob's today. We're going with the two minute warning. Then I know NBA season, the in season tournaments getting rolling right now. Then that's another exciting sport that we obviously get to see coming back on TV. Then obviously now uh, college football is going. I shouldn't say going. It's it's winding down towards towards crunch time for everybody and then that's going to be really really fun and we got some good slates for college football games coming up this weekend and then it's going to be really really exciting then obviously nhl's in full swing so i've been also getting on the fan duel then i i'm also one of the new people that have gotten the fan duel then i was first i'm I'm kind of thinking before I got into FanDuel, I was kind of skeptical just because I don't know, because I've always been into one particular betting style. Then walking on a FanDuel, I tell you what, guys, it's really, really fun. I really do enjoy FanDuel. So seriously, guys, go check out FanDuel and use the code that Josh happened to mention. But outside of that, Josh, I know we got a stellar lineup, so I'm going to cut the chit chat and let's get rolling with it. Yeah, absolutely. And Blake wasn't able to join in yet. Uh, he may be able to jump in here tonight. We'll just see what what ends up uh, lining up for his schedule and everything. But we're going to get to it anyways. We're going to start off. Uh, and let's start off with the NFL trade deadline because that was uh, this past week. I guess it was uh, it ended. Uh, if you're watching on a Thursday, it would have ad- ended yesterday technically. So uh, right there on the the, uh, the 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 beginning of the new month, it's 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 over. Uh, and there was a lot of big time trades, but we're going to get to our top trades and looking through the league. Let's start off with the one that really shocked me the most. It was Chase Young going to the 49ers. Uh, I mean, looking at this trade, I think this was perfect because 
you talk about a team in the 49ers who I already think has it lined up to be one of the best teams in the NFL, but then you add another defensive lineman uh, because they got guys like, uh, you know, we've got, uh, they had Hargrave go over there and they've got Bosa up there on the front. And, and you know, now you bring in Chase Young, bring in, an, uh, I mean, let's mention it too, another Buckeye getting added to that D-line. I mean, this D-line is really scary when you when you take a look at it overall. Uh, how do you grade the, the, the 49ers being able to pick up Chase Young from the Commanders? I think this is a really, really good pick for the 49ers. I mean, thinking about it from Washington, this is a big key person that Washington's now going to probably regret really missing. I know, obviously, Chase Young, he – He's had a lot of success throughout the first seven weeks going on the season. Like when he was with Washington, he had 15 tackles through seven games this season. That's huge for him. But I mean, just even in general, like this is a really, really big key grab for for the San Francisco 49ers. I know, obviously, like you mentioned, having Nick Bosa, then having a star San Francisco defense like they already do, but now adding this guy into the character, this is definitely going to another. This is going to be another big key thing for San Francisco's defense. I mean, coming off last week, beat, losing to the – not trying to be biased, the Houday Nation, Cincinnati Bengals, um, that was a really good win for us. But, oh, yeah. I mean, this is definitely a really good thing for the San Francisco 49ers going into the rest of the season for what they got going on for their defensive front. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said, too, it's just just thinking about how scary this team already was on defense as a whole. I mean, they had all yeah. kinds of dudes lined up on defense, and, and now they're adding another really good defensive lineman uh, and just imagining what kind of attack that's going to that's gonna bring from the 49ers. Uh, I mean, I guess for your, for your Bengals, you're glad that they made this trade now and not before going against the Bengals. But, yeah, absolutely, a really yes. good win for the Bengals, too. I was really, really happy and, and proud of them being able to pull that off. Um, but let's jump over to one. I know you brought this one to our attention, uh, and it's Josh Dobbs going over to the Cardinals. Uh, I personally look at this, and I think it's a really good trade for for many reasons. Because I guess when I when I first heard of it, I thought, okay, they're just looking for a backup because Kirk Cousins went down with an injury, uh, and it, it looks like he's probably going to be out for the season most likely. But what this says to me is that the, the Vikings look at their squad right now and they say, hey, we got guys like Justin Jefferson and you know all these other guys around them, and they think that they actually have a chance. They feel like they have a chance, and they're going to, to fight back, uh, and, and they're not going to give up. They're not going to tank the season to try to get something later on. They're going to go out and get a guy who went down to the Cardinals, and I think it was within four days or something like that, he ends up starting uh, a game or at least playing in a game and ends up taking the starting position there in, in Arizona and shows that he's good enough to where now, uh, looking at the other side from the Cardinals, uh, uh, props to them because they were able to get something of value out of a guy who you wouldn't have thought had much value. And so I think this was really a win on both sides, the Vikings being able to get in a guy that I think can lead them to a few more victories and possibly get them to the playoffs. I don't think they're going to win a Super Bowl with Josh Dobbs, but I think it just shows that they're not wanting to give up. They're not going to lay down and and just tank the season. Uh, And so I guess what about you for, for Josh Dobbs going over to the Vikings? I think this is a good pickup for the Minnesota Vikings. Like you said, I don't expect them to make it all the way to the Super Bowl, but I mean, just to keep their season going and in the positive right track that they already have been going since their big win coming off the other night, I mean, it's definitely a good pickup for the Minnesota Vikings, obviously. We've all heard the news that Kirk Cousins, unfortunately, tore his Achilles, then he's going to be sideline more like to miss the rest of the season that's a horrible injury to to have especially at the quarterback it's it's a it's already a horrible injury to begin with but getting at the quarterback position that's just gonna that's gonna make it hurt even more so obviously thoughts and prayers go out to Kirk Cousins and hopefully for a speedy recovery but looking at the future now I think with with Dobbs coming in at quarterback I think this is gonna help the Minnesota Vikings like like I said, I don't expect them to be a Super Bowl contender with this kind of situation, but I mean, it's definitely something for getting them through the rest of the season and possibly into the postseason. So I think it's a, I think it's a good pickup overall. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and you know, just like I said too, I mean, I think both sides being able to make something out of this because for one, for the Vikings, you were able to get. I mean, you gave up. I think it was a sixth round pick, if I remember correctly. I didn't write that down, but you know, just looking at that, I think that's something that you didn't really have to give up a lot but I feel like you got a good a good return in that and then for the for the Cardinals uh, you, you you held on to him as long as you could and you were you were able to get the most 
uh, out of him and end up getting something in return, which is really cool uh, when you when you really look at it. And so the fact that they were yes. able to get something out of Josh Dobbs and now they've got a, an, an extra trade out of it too. Uh, going over to the last trade that we're going to bring up, uh, looking at uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones, a former Michigan wide receiver, going over from the Browns being traded to the Lions. Uh, this is one that I wanted to bring up just because you think of the Lions, the offensive power that they already have in Amon's, Amon Ross St. Brown, uh, and then you've got Josh Reynolds. And even if you really want to think about you know, Jamison Williams, uh, you know, uh, I guess that would have been... Is, it, is Jamison, he's still there with the Lions, right? He, he went over the Lions? I believe he's still there. I'm, I'm trying to, trying to think. Um, but, you know, thinking of everything that they've got, and then uh, Sam Laporta has been really good with them, and seeing what, what uh, Jared Goff has been able to put together for them, you know, with them, and, and seeing everything that, that, that they're building, I mean, I, I really like this Lions team. I think they're looking stronger and stronger as the season goes on, and now you bring in Donovan Peoples-Jones, who wasn't the biggest wide receiver for the Browns, but we know what he's capable of. We saw him make big time catches in in the playoff game with Baker, uh, you know, a few few seasons ago. Whenever they actually had a quarterback there in Cleveland, and you know, just looking at this overall, I really like this. Adding another receiver who can actually do something and be a threat for you on the Lions. This is another one I looked at, and I think this is one of the top trades uh, of this, you know, before the trade deadline. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously it gives Jerry Goff another opportunity or not opportunity, another option to throw to. I mean, like you say, he may not be the, the hugest guy, but he's definitely going to give 110% every time he's on the field. So yeah. like what I've talked about this before, Detroit's already, they're really, really good this season. I'm not saying that they haven't been good in previous seasons, but this year is, in my opinion, this is the standout season that Detroit definitely needed. So I think obviously pick them down with people's Jones has definitely going to help Detroit in the long run later towards the end of the year and I I'm going to go out there I sincerely think that they're going to win their division this year just because of how strong that they played so like I said I think this is a really really good pickup for uh for Detroit picking up Donovan Peoples Jones so I I really hope that he sticks to his game plan just keep balling out and just stay strong and stay healthy throughout the entire rest of the season yeah yeah absolutely it's it's exciting to see trades like this and especially for a team like the Lions who I don't know what the ceiling is for the Lions, but I'm looking at them right now and I'm thinking, I don't know many other teams in the NFL who are looking as dangerous as they are. So I think they could make a really big run. I don't see, I'm not going to make any bold predictions and say, I think they're going to win the Super Bowl this year. I think they make a really good playoff run though. And, and, and the way that they've, they're people, they're piecing it together right now. And with that, that kind of a trade, man, they, they look really good. And I'm, I'm really happy for the Lions and what they're able to put together. But, uh, definitely. Outside of the trade deadline, I guess you can also say that that the uh, Raiders traded to nothing. Uh, they ended up trading to the breadline, uh, sending their their head coach Josh McDaniels and then also the GM Dave Ziegler fired both of them. This was kind of news that may have shocked some, but I think when you look at Josh McDaniels and, and what he did with the Raiders and the fact that they just kept on giving him more chances. I don't know what he did around the Raiders that would make you think we should have kept him. And so honestly, I think this was a well-deserved firing and a good riddance to Josh McDaniels. I hope, I hope he sticks around in the league. I hope he's able to be, I think he's a really good coordinator. And so I hope he gets another shot as a coordinator and maybe he learns and builds off that and becomes a better head coach. I just didn't see it from him as a head coach there with the Raiders and it was time for him to leave. Uh, and then ob obviously with the GM, Dave Ziegler and some of the moves that he's made, uh, not happy with that. I don't have any defense for, uh, for Dave Ziegler either. So the Raiders, do you think this was a good move to get rid of uh, two key pieces of the organization? I sincerely do. I mean, you look how the Oakland Raiders started their season, and I mean, don't get me wrong, he, he had to know he was probably on the hot seat already to begin with. I mean, take it for granted, the last couple of weeks, it's they've had success, but at the end of the day, you got to do something to try and get this, this Oakland Raiders team just rolling. I mean, now that obviously this just happened now, I heard there was a rumor that they were benching Jimmy Garoppolo for their secondary quarterback now. I don't know who their secondary quarterback is, but I heard that he is going to be the be the starter for the Oakland Raiders. So something's 
something had to happen, obviously. I know any kind of coach didn't want to have it go this way, but, I mean, at the same time, like I said, look at how Oakland started and look what – Look what Oakland has produced. And I heard a lot of people that have told me that Oakland's going to be the team this year with who they've got. Obviously, like I said, Jimmy G, uh, Jamal Adams. And, I mean, just I'm not seeing Oakland really producing. I'm really seeing them just try and hang on and survive. And even if even if that's the case, they're they're still not getting the wins like, the, like you would normally see the Oakland Raiders produce. So I think this is going to – I don't like saying it's a good thing to do, but by the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do just to try and get a dub on the board. Yeah, and I, th- I think ultimately it comes to a certain point. You've got to draw a line in the sand and say this: once we meet this line, we're going to move on. And and I think that was a time mm-hmm. for for the Raiders. And I, I think maybe they even gave him too many chances at, at at that. You know, there's a lot of coaches that would have gotten yeah. fired even sooner. And especially for the GM, I think I put in the NFL. It's a lot different. I think it's harder to place as much blame on the coach as it is on a GM who has more control over the roster where the coach really has more control over the game plan rather than the roster in most situations. There's some situations where the coach is able to step in and say, say that he wants a certain player to fit his scheme or whatever. But in the NFL, it is a little different where you can't place as much on the head coach. So that's why I do, I do hope the best for Josh McDaniels. It's just, I think he was given too many chances uh, and definitely time for him to move on. A lot of rumors too, that, that, that maybe, uh, Devonte Adams was the, the guy that was pressing to get him fired and all this. I don't care. Uh, and, and even if that is the case, he had every right to, you know. And, and, and like I said, I think that this was the right thing to, to get rid of Josh McDaniels at this point. So we'll see what they're able to piece together and who they're going to get in. Maybe they bring back John Gruden. They forget the emails and bring him back in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all we have for the NFL top trades. I mean, did you have any other top trades that you really liked around the league that you wanted to point out? I mean, there was a couple, but I mean, nothing really stuck out to the ones that we mentioned. But I mean, for the overall ones, like I said, the biggest one that we already covered was the very first one we did with, with what's his name going to the command. I mean, going yeah, to the 49ers. Yeah, Chase, so. yeah, Chase, Chase Young going there. I mean, that's that's crazy. Uh, that, that's, that's that's a that's scary huge. move because now with as as good as the 49ers are, now you're adding to that talent on defense too. one of the best defenses in the league and you're going to add to it scary stuff and uh, i'm sure we'll, we'll have more um, more to to say about that when we see it in action too but let's get to the two minute warning you want to head us off with that oh yeah hey up with the two minute warning first off i know this was this is kind of breaking news for me just because i didn't realize this until josh told me bobby knight the legendary basketball coach unfortunately dies at the age of 83 then i i know louie bobby knight was one of the college basketball signature coaches and signature personality renowned for his for his abrian qualities that helped kept kept bringing him to the principle of the sport i mean josh i bobby knight just has a name for himself already i know the nba world and the basketball world and just in general is We've lost another really good person. Then, Josh, give me your opinion of what you thought of Bobby Knight. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in Indiana, and Bobby Knight was a legend there. Uh, from him throwing a chair across the 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 gym floor, getting angry, uh, he he was an absolute legend. It didn't matter that that he had the anger issues that he did. He won games, uh, and so he was he was. A fun coach to watch, not only because he was able to put together winning teams, but because of the the, the sideline antics and stuff like that. It, it's fun for the viewership. Maybe not so fun for the PR team of the college that has to deal with that, but he was a, a great IU basketball coach and it will always go down as a legend, and I'm sure they'll have all kinds of tributes to pay to him this season. Uh, but Bobby Knight, yeah, I mean, it's it's sad to see a, a legend go. Uh, I mean, it's it, we 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 just had you know we we had to we didn't even bring it up uh, because he's not really a sports personality. But like Matthew Perry, uh, you know, and and thinking of of what he was able to do, you know, trying to let go of a legend, you know, in in, in the TV world, uh, it's it's hard to let that go. And then now Bobby Knight, you know, and, and just seeing uh, stuff like this, it's it's tough. Uh, and and so it's gonna be it's gonna be sad to to know that there's no more uh, legendary Bobby Knight, no more throwing the chairs across the the basketball court uh and you know in in, in anger but uh overall i mean it's it was it was really fun to go back i wasn't i don't think either of us are old enough to really remember him as a coach but uh to go back and see some of the stuff that he would do on the sidelines and how how animated he was it was because of the passion of the game too and so i don't i don't want to misconstrue that as he was just an angry guy or anything he was just he he had a, a a growing passion for the game 
Uh, so it's it's sad to see a legend go, though. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not trying to be on the the train of losing people, but going on to our next topic, it's um, this is one that hits kind of close to the heart and um, close to where I'm from. And Josh, I don't, I don't necessarily know if I can't remember if you were around here, Josh, or if you were still in Indiana. Um, obviously, a lot of people have heard about Adam Johnson um, passing away due to a horrifying injury on the ice and then um, I'm not going to go into full detail about the injury just because I know a lot of people have probably heard about it but obviously Alan Johnson played here in Sioux City with the Sioux City Musketeers in the USHL the United States Hockey League then he went on to become a uh, UMD Bulldog up in Minnesota and he was the one who scored the, who scored the, uh, the golden goal to send the um, the UMD Bulldogs into the Frozen Four, then um, then getting to play, if, if I remember correctly, I think it was 13 or 14 games in the NHL with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Then um, I know, obviously, with that all going on now, obviously, your thoughts and condolences to the Johnson family just for this horrific incident that's happened at the age of 20. He was only 29 years old. And um, I know, obviously, from what I've heard people say and just from headlines, I've seen that they're trying to they're they're doing an ongoing investigation with this entire situation. Now, Josh, um, like I said, I don't I can't remember if you were still here in Iowa or if you were back in Indiana at the time. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think we were in Indiana, but uh, w- which is funny, too, uh, because looking back at it, he started with the Indiana ice in, in the USHL. And then really? got traded over to the to the Muskies. Was there for two years. I think he was an assistant captain, his second and final year with the Muskies. Um, but yeah, really sad. When, once I heard that too, and the name sounded familiar, uh, and and then they said he's a former, you know, on the on the ESPN headlines, he's a former Penguins player and all this. And uh, then I, I I realized, oh wow, he's he was a Muskie, uh, and that that's that's sad. You and I are really close to that that organization, the Sioux City Musketeers, and uh, you know, it's 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 a tragedy that you hate to hear and and. Especially, you know, we had Demar Hamlin almost, uh, almost, you know, really, that really close to death on the on the football field, uh, and and that was that was scary. But then seeing a guy, uh, and and for those who 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 don't know what the injury was and really want to know, we're not going to get into it. It was really graphic, and so if you really want to know much more, then you can go there. But uh, it, it was it was just a, a gruesome injury that that ended. Uh, really terribly and and they they had to evacuate fans from the from the stadium over uh, somewhere around 8000 fans uh yeah it's it's sad and uh you know and i i i hope that the investigation helps the safety of the players cuz this this has happened a few times uh i don't i don't know if it, if it's happened in death um but uh this this injury has happened a few times in in hockey and so i mean just I don't know. That's that's scary to think about, uh, and, and and I hate that for the players, especially the players that were involved. Uh, so I mean, hearts hearts out f- to the organizations, to the players, uh, to the to the family uh, and friends. I mean, to Adam Johnson. I mean, just it's it's a terrible thing to, to hear about, and and something that I, I wanted to make sure we brought up on this because for one, it's it's a hometown thing for us, uh, and we we just lost. Uh, you know, what was the goalie's name? He played for the Col- Columbus Blue, Blue Jackets. Yeah, uh, he played for the Blue Jackets, and before that, played for the Musketeers too. And so, uh, the, the Muskies organization has dealt with this uh, a lot in the last few years, and so it's it's tough. And so, uh, it, it's it's one of those one of those things too that you hate to see for the sport, uh, and 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 obviously not just the sport, the, the family and everything, everyone involved too. Uh, and so, just yeah, prayers and, and hearts out out to everyone involved. Yeah, and um, I'm not trying to go over a two mil. I'll we'll we'll edit it and we'll do the two thirty minute in the morning. But um, I, I think I already I had the, op- the two minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, I had the opportunity to um, to talk and meet up with Adam Johnson. I tell you what, he was um, he was a really down to earth, humbling person at the time. And um, if there's one thing that you can't take away from him, it was a. Uh, he would always do whatever it took to try and get a smile on your face. And he would always make sure to say hi to you. And he would just talk to you for a little bit before he had to go do his business. And it just goes to show you how much a little thing like that can go a long way to a person. But like we were saying, um, 
thoughts and condolences to everybody involving with the incident. But um, going to our last topic on the two minute warning, um, we have a a new headline with James Harden leaving now. So James Harden, obviously, I know we've heard James Harden name around so much. He's been bouncing around so, so many different teams, and now James Harden has finally gotten to a different team again he is now with the clippers originally with the philadelphia 76ers but josh i know there's been like i said so much talk with james harden bouncing around with so many different teams do you think there's a reason like in a good reason that he's been bouncing around with so many different teams like as just like his personality or do you think that any team that they get his name they just want to get him out of their asap after a couple years yeah, I think he's one of those guys a lot like maybe AD or Westbrook or Kyrie where you really want the dude for his talent and what you know he's capable of on the court, but it's just off the court and in the locker room kind of stuff that you're just not ecstatic about getting him. Uh, and, and obviously, I think once you first get him, you're you're extremely happy. And I'm, I'm excited to see what happens with him and the Clippers uh, because with, with Kawhi and PG-13 out there, we can see what they're able to piece together. Uh, and, and I'm drawing a blank, too, because we, we haven't been tuned into the to the basketball world yet, and, and it's been a little bit for us to to get ourselves weaned back into that. But uh, is, is Westbrook, is he still out at the Clippers, too, do you know? Because I, I don't uh, recall. Um, I thought he was still with the Lakers, but I'll, I'm going to have to look that up now. No, he's he, he's definitely not with the Lakers anymore. He was gone from there. Uh, so, I mean, just looking at it overall, I mean, just th- thinking of, of what, uh, Harden going out there with – back out in, in L.A. or, you know, putting him out in L.A. Uh, with with all the stars out there. I mean, that's – it's it's exciting, uh, but yeah, I, I think the reason why he gets pushed around so much is a little bit like you said. Maybe maybe his personality hard to get along with uh, when he's he, he's just a sore loser. Uh, and I, I get it. It's it's hard it's hard to lose games. I'm not I'm not a I'm not a a, a fair loser by any means. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy's seen me losing golf time and time again. I am I, I am the sorest of losers. But it, I'm I'm just saying that because I think he is a sore loser. I think he's a guy that's hard to be around when he's not winning. And and honestly, a big part of that too, I think, comes from he wants a ring. Everybody everybody who makes it to the league and becomes a big name like James Harden or KD or Steph Curry, any of these guys, they they want a ring. And when you get that first one like KD you want more you want another one and so you're doing you're, you're willing to do whatever it takes to get another one so I, I I'm not hating on it uh, on him for it I just think he's shipped around because of him being a sore loser <laughs> absolutely but I mean outside of that I mean all of course obviously all best wishes to James Harden and just having him still being healthy and having a decent basketball career but outside of that Josh that is all for the two minute warning Josh what else do we have left on the starter lineup we got tonight let's jump into the NBA uh, I guess keep it in the NBA and let's talk about this yeah. season tournament because this is something I didn't really hear too much about I didn't understand what it was uh, and so I was reading through it and I think the easiest way for me to explain it is just going to NBA.com and reading what they have set up for us for a summary of, of what's going on here something that I'm, I'm kind of excited to see uh, because we we know that all of these these major uh, leagues, you know, in the NHL or MLB or the NFL, uh, even college football, it, it, you know, and, and college basketball, all of these different leagues are going to try to do something to spice things up because they want to make it interesting for the viewership. And the NBA is doing something. And I'm interested to see how it plays out because they're even going as far as making new courts and stuff like that for it to really pop. And so I'm really excited to see this, but it's uh, starting this Friday. So uh, if you're watching right now, it's tomorrow. Uh, this starts. It's an inaugural in-season tournament, uh, and it's so it's going to be start off on November 3rd. And it's it's a championship, uh, or the championship of this is going to be on December 9th. Uh, and so you see this this whole like tournament kind of thing going on during the season, which. I'm interested because I just don't understand how it's all going to lay out. I, we, I, we don't really know what it's going to look like until it's here. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see what all of this looks like when it actually comes uh, into fruition. But uh, it's going to start off with some group play. So all 30 teams have been have been assigned randomly, uh, kind of drawn into groups of five within their conference based on win-loss records and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and, and, and it's dating back to the 22-23 regular season is how they, they configured all this. Uh, and so beginning November 3rd and continuing through the 28th of this month, 
Each team is going to play four designated group play games on tournament nights and one game against each opponent in its group with two games at home and and two on the road. So we're going to see more of this tournament style play during the season. And so that's that's kind of exciting to see because I think everybody's always drawn in. I think what they're they're looking at, too, is the NBA finals, the NBA uh, playoffs everyone tunes into that not everyone really tunes into the, the during the season so they're thinking they can do this uh, there's also going to be a knockout rounds where eight teams will advance to the knockout rounds and the team with the best standing and group play games and each of the six groups uh, and two wild cards the team from each conference with with the best record in group play games that finished second in its group uh, so the knockout rounds will be single elimination games in the quarterfinals played in NBA team markets on Monday, December 4th, and Tuesday, December 5th, the semifinals and championships. So uh, the qualifying teams will compete for the prize pool uh, and the new new in-season tournament trophy, the NBA Cup is what they're calling it. So, I mean, looking at this overall, I feel like this is kind of cool. I, I look at this and I'm thinking, so they're still kind of keeping this uh, because it also mentions that all 67 games across both stages of the in-season tournament will count towards the regular season standings, except for the championship game. So it's it's all in-season. It's all during the season. It's all going to count towards your season. So it's not like you can you can bomb this and it not even affect your regular season. It's still going to affect your regular season. That's something I think is really cool. But So it's all going to count towards that, except for the championship game, which I think is fair when you think about that. Uh, and then yeah. on top of that, you're adding kind of an extra uh an, an extra pizzazz to it with you know the new cords maybe maybe new jerseys and uniforms i don't know about that yet um but then you know just the the fact that it comes down to it and it's going to get into this this single elimination phase and so you're you're leaning towards and i assume this prize pool that they're talking about is some sort of winnings for uh you know for the the teams that to be split among the players uh, the teams the organizations themselves the coaches so i look at this personally i think this is pretty cool to see this in tournament i'm really excited to see how it all plays out uh and, and like i said i think this is something because fans love to see tournaments that's why we tune into the finals for anything um, because we like to see the, the the tournaments play out and so jeremy what are your thoughts do you think this is cool do you think this is something that maybe it's just going to fizzle out and it's going to turn into a dud uh how do you feel about this in-season tournament going on i like it a little bit i think it gives more interaction for the fans to like diehard basketball players or not basketball players but diehard basketball fans to get to watch a little bit more basketball in the year like i think it i don't want to say it's gonna burn out but i think it might later down the road but from just what you all just obviously just said i think there's gonna be a lot of hype about this and i think it's gonna be pretty interesting for the first couple of seasons that they get this going but overall like obviously you said we can't talk a whole much about it just because this is brand new out of the gate so obviously i i kind of hope the same thing a little bit like what you mentioned have like different style jerseys or do like special themes or do whatever that your mind comes to just because like i said this is brand new for all of us like we can't this is one of the things that obviously we can't go back and talk about saying oh they did this 20 years ago blah 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 blah. but at the end of the day i think this is going to be a nice booster for the nba so my hats is off to the commissioner for thinking of this idea or whoever thought of this because i'm not necessarily sure if the commissioner was the one who thought of it yeah i know adam silver was definitely a part in in, in it all i don't think he was the mastermind uh but he, he was, he was yeah, definitely a part of yeah. it so you know hats off to him for for thinking you know hey this is a good idea let's do it because i do think this is going to draw people into the sport it's definitely going to draw me in if it's drawing me in it's probably going to draw others like me who you know, I'm not an NBA fan per se. I like watching the NBA. I keep up with the NBA, but I'm not really an NBA yeah, fan. So, uh, you know, drawing drawing me into a tournament style that's that's going to work for me, uh, and and so I think this this could work for quite a few people. Uh, and and yeah, I definitely. encourage I encourage everybody to look up to the in uh, the NBA in season tournament courts because I'm pretty sure this was a real thing. And they're going to have some sick court designs. Uh, you should Google that real quick just so you can see it and react to it real quick. Uh, just just type in NBA in-season tournament courts. Because like if, if this was real and they're going to do these kind of courts, uh, it might be a little distracting. But it's it's to pop and let you know, hey, this is an in-season tournament game. This isn't just a regular in-season uh, game. It's, it's a tournament game. You see those? 
<laughs> That's dope. And but yeah, I see what you understand with saying that would be distracting. But yeah, so every, overall, everybody should guys, look like, these up. That is really, really. And I like how they break it up between the East and the West compared to just yeah. doing all the same kind of format. That's really, really yeah, it's, cool. It's and really smart. cool. Yeah, I mean, and and looking at some of these courts and the the concepts that are going into them, I don't know if they're gonna look exactly like that or if that's just concepts, but it may be a little too loud. But yeah, you guys should look it up. Yeah. Uh, NBA in season tournament courts because it's it's pretty sweet. Uh, and and that's I'm all for cool. the I'm all for the the cool uniforms, and that's that's why everybody's drawn into Oregon, you know, and Boise State's field and stuff like that is because mm. you you have fun <laughs> uniforms. I love seeing new uniforms, uh, and if you're a fan, you love seeing those new courts and stuff like that for your team. So, yeah, I, I think this is pretty big. But, uh, Jeremy, how about a little bit of a word from our friends over at Big Frig? Oh, dude, I can talk so much about Big Frig, but I know we really got so much of a time frame. But, guys, Big Frig has been one of my go-to uses for outdoor equipment or just even let alone just for quality of stuff that they always have in their shop. Big Frig is definitely one of my favorite things that I always use, whether it comes to their coolers, their tumblers, or just the little itty bitty things that you don't see out of other companies that I'm not going to name off just because um, you don't see a lot like that. Just because like if you look at for their coolers, for example, like their Badlands coolers, I got one, Josh has one, and First off, the design is unbelievable. I'm a hunter, and once I first saw that, first saw the design of the cooler, I thought that was the dopest thing ever. And just even going like to the little itty bitty specs and details, um, their coolers, they're lightweight, they're really nice, their handles are phenomenal, they're the racks that they bring up for the handle, they're locked inable, so it's not going to shake around while you're trying to carry the cooler. They have a nice foam grip at the top. Then even like their drain plugs are the are really really beefy just like you can like you see some coolers like when you go to your convenience store they just have a little pop top off then they most of the time you'll see them probably break off here like after maybe three or four uses of it but at the same time like compared to big freak it's actually a windable like a corkscrew type to where you actually have to screw it in and that thing when it's screwed in it's not going to go anywhere then even looking inside their cooler they're really, um, they're really beefy in their thermal, so where you can keep what's inside the cooler, like ice, it will keep them in there for a long time. When I went on vacation, I brought my cooler, and I I filled it up one time with ice when I first got down to my vacation. And even the other things, like they have a little cutting board that slides in the middle of the cooler for a divider, and just for obviously cutting low there it's meat cheese or whatever the situation is then you have a nice little basket rack in the cooler so where you can store like your deli meats or even if you want to store your cheese obviously in a cooler and you don't want to just set it on top of the ice and even going with their tumblers i've got one it's currently the dishwasher otherwise i'd show you guys just i use the living snot out of that thing it keeps i always I always have that for my morning cup of coffee just because it keeps it so hot and I can have it throughout the day. There was one time that I filled it up and I was running a little bit late for work and I forgot to grab it. It was really, really depressing. And I got home and it was still at a good room temperature for thinking. I worked 12 hour days and when I got home, it was still a really, really good temperature for me to drink. I know that was probably crazy thinking I'm drinking coffee at 6.30, in the, uh, 6:30 at night, but I mean, it still was delicious. Like I just poured it up. But guys, we've we love Big Freak so much, and we've got we want you guys to love Big Freak as much as we do. So if you go to bigfreak.com, use the code down below that you see. It is rising to twenty. That is R I S I N G T O two zero, and you will get twenty dollars, twenty percent off of your order. Excuse me, and it's already Big Freak already has amazing prices, but we're just giving you a little bit of a better of a deal. So like I said, guys, go to bigfreak.com and use the code rising two twenty. That is R I S I N G T O two zero. And you'll get 20% off of your order. Yeah, absolutely. An amazing product, amazing deal. Uh, and like you said too, I love their designs of the, the Badlands uh, camo cooler. Amazing. Uh, it's, it's one of the best. I knew I was forgetting some, I can't forget it. You will not be disappointed with this, guys. <laughs> I used to always have to try to pry that out of you, too. And I was always like, hey, how are they going to feel about these, Jeremy? And you're like, oh, they're going to like them. No, that's not what I'm asking. <laughs> but yeah, no, they, they really are amazing disappointed. Product. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, we, I, I didn't really even know too much about Big Frig until you brought them to my attention. Now I wouldn't go any other route. 
Big Frig is just the top the top dog for me. Uh, and, and so again, guys, go to bigfrig.com. Uh, that's B-I-G-F-R-I-G.com. Use code RISING220, R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-2-0, and get yourself 20% off an amazing product. But Jeremy, let's jump over to our top 10 really quick because we didn't get to drop this out to the people. Uh, so we're going to bring up our top 10 rankings. Again, we don't have Blake here to explain his top 10, but Blake has Georgia at number one, Michigan at number two, Florida State at number three, Washington at number four. Ohio State at number five, Oregon at number six, uh, Texas at number seven, Alabama at number eight, Oklahoma at number nine, and Ole Miss at number 10. Uh, so there's there's Blake's. Again, he doesn't have uh, the floor to talk about his, but Jeremy, go ahead and uh, give us your top 10 rankings real quick and, and uh, a quick explanation, I guess. All right. Obviously, I'll start from number one, go to number 10. Obviously, I'll just skip straight to... I want to say just stick to number six because obviously you go to the top five. It's all just locked in from there. Obviously, you guys can tell outside of Blake, we all we all have the same teams, just in a little bit of a different shape. Yeah, um, we have, we, you and I Georgia. have the exact same top five and probably for the same reasons. Uh, and then Blake just has Washington yeah. and Florida State kind of flipped around there. I guess and yeah. Ohio State. But obviously, yeah, but like I said, Georgia one, Michigan two, Ohio State three, Florida State four, uh, Washington five, Oregon six, um, Texas going at number seven, then Alabama coming back up on the reins now that they've gotten their season going at the at the right time where they really needed to get going. Then I have Penn State at number nine. I'm still after they play against Ohio State. That's my big deciding factor if I want to keep them in my top 10. But obviously, if they win, I'll keep them in my top 10. But if they lose, obviously, then they're going to get the boot from me. But then going to number 10, I have the Oklahoma Sooners. I knew with obviously watching the Oklahoma Sooners and how they played against Kansas, then it was just something that Josh doesn't really want to talk about. I know it. I don't want to talk about it either, but I'm going to cut it short. Um, Oklahoma, they definitely need to get their A game going. They need to wake up and play all four quarters of football and just stick to their stick to their game plan and play nose gritty Oklahoma Sooners football. But that's my yeah. top ten. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with mine, and I'll, uh, uh, I'll jump from the t- number ten spot up. And Blake and I both had the same idea, throwing Ole Miss in the top ten. I'm hard on my Sooners. Uh, I, I think – I understand a lot of people's frustrations, and so the playoff polls have come out now, and I, I'm I'm totally okay with the way that the playoff rankings have have started, and I've even I've even expressed how I think Ohio State deserves possibly to be even even be up there at the number one spot. I think the number one through three, absolutely, really one through four, are absolutely all a tie for number one right now. Uh, it's it's really impossible to pick one over the other, and so the way that we I'll speak for myself. I'm pretty sure you and Blake are the same way. I don't take the uh, head-to-head. I don't take the overall record, and I don't take the eye test one over the other. I, I compare them all three together, and, and it, I guess it all boils down to an eye test. Um, but I'm, I'm putting my, my Sooners at number 10. I'm dropping them all the way to 10 because I think when I look at the eye test, I think that defense needs to improve. They have been slipping tackles the last two games, and that's really where Oklahoma's had their struggles. We can talk about the offense and what's been wrong on the offense, but when your offense is scoring 30-some points against Kansas, you should still win that game. Then number nine, I've got Penn State. I, I still believe in the Nittany Lions, uh, and I have a hard time ranking them below uh, or I'm sorry, I, I was looking at yours. Uh, <laughs> uh, Penn State, I was, I was confused with myself. So I was like, wait a second, I don't think I had Penn State up there. But Ole Miss, because I think Ole Miss does deserve in the, be in the top 10. Their only loss was to Alabama. And so I think that says quite a bit about them. I think they are looking pretty good. Uh, and then going up to number eight, I've got Alabama. Alabama is just a good team. And I've got them ranked just below the Shorthorns because the Texas Longhorns, uh, you know what? As much as I hate to talk good about them, they're a very good football team, and they only lost to the Sooners so far. And I get it. You're saying head-to-head, the Sooners should be ranked ahead of Texas, and then Alabama below them because of it. No, I don't go that way because I just think that that loss hurts the Sooners worse 
than a win earlier in the season. So personally, I think that 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 uh, loss really hurts the Sooners the way that they lost that game too. And and I think a head to head matchup right now, I'm picking Texas. And I came on the record saying that before, right after the Oklahoma Texas game, I think Oklahoma would win in a second matchup. Uh, and then up to number six, Oregon absolutely deserves to be up there, uh, just like the playoff committee thinks so. And right below Washington because they lost to Washington. And then I've got Florida State uh, at number four, Ohio State at number three, Michigan at number two, and Georgia. Georgia at number one, all four of those tied for number one. I don't know how to put the, the order because, like I said, I'm going based off eye test, uh, overall record, and uh, just, just the, the, the overall uh, head-to-head you really can't do yet. So I think Michigan, Ohio State, I don't really care what order you put them in because they're going to go against each other. And then Georgia still has a, you know an SEC championship game, and then uh, Mizzou this weekend. They've got Tennessee as well. So looking at, at that, I think that's going to shape up for itself. And Florida State, I can see the argument for Florida State up at number one or two. Uh, so just all four of these teams, amazing teams. So I really can't get mad at anyone on how you want to place those teams. But like I said, I think we all kind of match mash all those factors together to make our top top 10 rankings. And so there's our top 10 rankings. If you don't like it, come at us because uh, we're not changing them. Uh, we're not changing them until next week. So uh, let's go ahead and jump over to our fan duel bets. Jeremy, uh, I guess any, any comments outside of that on the uh, on the overall rankings? <sighs> For the overall rankings, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I was I had um, Ole Miss at number eleven. I was really really tempted to have them in my top ten, but I know, like you said, having the one loss to Alabama, then that was my big thing. But still, if I had to flip flop two teams, it probably would have been Penn State and Ole Miss. But yeah. outside of that, I, if I didn't change it, I still like I said have Ole Miss as my honorable mention. You least. know who I actually have ranked above Penn State, and I oh, I had them in my top ten until I had a couple of days to think about it. Uh, so I'm glad we didn't run this through on Tuesday because whenever I thought about it, I was like, no, that's just that's unrealistic. I'm just I'm just hyping them up too much. But it's the Missouri Tigers. Air Force. I almost put them. <laughs> yeah, Air Force. There we go. Throw Air Force in there. No. Uh, but the Missouri Tigers, I, I almost threw them at the number 10 spot and I took them out. I was like, no, I just can't hype them up that much. Ole Miss is better than than Missouri right now. Let's let's be real. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but let's go over to our FanDuel bets. So we've got FanDuel. Uh, that's a new sponsor of ours. Uh, we've got, you know, like we like we said, we, you can you can look at all the different sports books and and check out which one you like the best. But the one that we've picked for this month is FanDuel. Absolutely top three sports book for me. Uh, I look at FanDuel and I think they've got a lot of great things. Like I said, the profit boosts and everything like that. So go to rising2.com slash FanDuel. Our, our picks are all going to be off FanDuel uh, this entire month. So the entire month of November is going to be our FanDuel picks. And then each month we'll change it up and bring you guys a different sports book. Maybe you haven't ever heard of the sports book we're going to use. Uh, so let's let's switch it up and, and use a few different ones. We're going to probably start off with the more popular ones with the FanDuels and DraftKings and all that. But FanDuel, uh, check out FanDuel. And, I, and like I said, if you don't have a FanDuel already, uh, you can get signed up and get a $150 bonus uh, if you sign up and bet $5. So free cheddar to throw on the game. I'll start off with Blake's real quick. He's He had, uh, so this is going to be for Thursday night since this is a Thursday episode that you guys are seeing. So we're actually guessing ahead of time. And so let's see, Blake has Texas Tech uh, to cover the spread of uh, three. See, I have to double check here. Yeah, so Texas Tech minus three against uh, TCU. So he thinks they're going to win by three or more. Uh, and that's sitting at plus, or my, sorry, minus 105, if I can use my words properly. And then he also has Troy at minus four and a half. At, that's sitting at the odds of minus 106. Uh, so Troy beating South Alabama. Man, I'm surprised he's going against this South Alabama wow. Jaguars over there. So uh, he's he's picking Troy minus four four and a half. So that's his there. Uh, and we are going to keep our standings. We're not going to do it based on record, but we're going to base it off total winnings. Uh, so with that one, uh, that, that's kind of how our rankings are going to be set up. And we'll have a graphic to place every week on that as well. So we'll, we'll check that out. But Jeremy, let's jump over to you. What is your FanDuel picks of the night? My FanDuel picks, I got now the obvious, like I said, NHL is back in full swing. I'm sticking to my good grassroots NHL, and I I did the opposite of what I usually do. I picked the 
under on this one against the Ottawa Senators versus the LA Kings. Now, I watched the LA Kings play the other night, and they were playing against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I tell you what, I, a lot of people probably be thinking, okay, Toronto is going to roll right over them. No, um, LA came out guns blazing, and they beat the Toronto Maple Leafs. And they only, I think, if I remember right, the final score was either four to one or five to one. Correct me if I'm wrong, everybody. But I mean, literally, the LA Kings they've been buzzing this year. So, but looking at the Ottawa Senators, I know there's been a lot of talk about the Ottawa Senators with obviously with Kachuk and just in general for the Ottawa Senators. But I have I'm sticking with the under at this one, and the under is currently at seven. So now looking at the other selection that I had, I had the money line on the Minnesota Wild against the New Jersey Devils. Then obviously I can go off with both the goaltending matchups. Like obviously for the Minnesota Wild, you got Flower. What more can you say? And if you don't know who Flower is, go look him up. But I'll, I'll, I'll cut you some time. His name is Mark andre Fleury. That dude is the absolute stud in the NHL between the pipes. Then looking on the other side for the New Jersey Devils, um, obviously with former Sioux City Musketeers goalie Akira Schmid, then from what he's produced into the NHL, I know he's got a couple starts already this year. It hasn't been the best of starts, but obviously you look at some of these guys in the NHL, and these, it's the NHL for one, so you really can't mess around in the NHL. But going against them, I wanted to pick the New Jersey Devils on this one, guys, but something was just telling me that, experience in between the pipes this is going to be a big key thing for the minnesota wild so i chose the minnesota wild for the money line and that is currently sitting at plus 105 against the new jersey devils which is at minus 125 so i sincerely think it's just going to be a battle of experience in between the pipes so prove me if i'm wrong guys but like i said put your money where your mouth is and let's roll yeah, on the uh, FanDuel uh, for yours, you've got plus 110 for the, the Senators Kings under and then plus 102 oh. on that wild money line versus Devils. So you're, you're looking pretty good. You're actually, if you were able to win those, you're going to be ahead on the overall units there. But uh, I'll jump to mine. I've got uh, starting off, with, it's going to be a Thursday night bet. So I'm going to start off with the Thursday night football. I'm going to pick the Steelers. Uh, I had a really hard time with this because seeing how Will Levis played in his first game, he played really well. And I'm, I, I, I wanted to pick the Titans and an underdog and just pick their money line. But instead I went with the Steelers minus two and a half. I think they can win this game and I think they can pull it pull out with the, you know, a, a field goal or more. I think they should be able to do that. It's, it's a tough one, but that's sitting at minus 114. And then I'm going to go over to the NHL along with you, Jeremy, and I'm going to bet on some NHL because the NHL season is here, uh, which means Jeremy has plenty to say now. Uh, and let's uh, go. <laughs> and I'm going to I'm going to take Tampa Bay Lightning money line over the Blue Jackets. That's sitting at minus 176. Uh, so just overall, I me mean, not a whole lot of winnings on it. So I'm not going for winnings. I'm going for a, a victory here. So I'm going to start off a little bit. The, the NHL has been a little tough right now because it's so early in the season. You haven't seen a full identity from everybody. It's starting to shape up and you're starting to see what to, to go with. So I'm going to pick uh, Tampa Bay Lightning to beat the Blue Jackets because they should. They should beat the Blue Jackets. And I'm surprised that that's sitting only at uh, minus 176 there. But uh, really excited. So like I said, we're all going to have this little competition each month because this is something we used to do. Uh, and so we're going to bring it back. Each month is going to be a different sports book to bring you guys. This this month is FanDuel. So go check out FanDuel at rising2.com slash FanDuel. R-I-S-I-N-G-T-E-O dot com slash F-A-N-D-U-E-L. Uh, so yeah, again, you can go get signed up today and automatically get that promotion of betting $5 and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. But that's pretty much all we've got for you guys. We thank you so much for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We are trying to grow and it's all up to you guys that we've grown as much as we have. So hit that subscribe button. Also hit that like button. That's another way for us to help beat the algorithm. Uh, and you can always follow us on social media, on Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok, all that fun stuff and follow us on there. Join us, uh, join in with the fun and everything, guys. We we really appreciate all of the support we've gotten over there and the growth. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can give us a five-star review. Share us with a friend. Uh, and like we say all, all the time, with all of this, all of this is because of you guys. We've been growing tremendously because of what you guys have given us. Uh, and we thank you so much for it. But that's all we've got for today. So we'll see you next time.